Is it uh, 2 o'clock on Tuesday? Is this the Rom Kids show? Uh, hi everyone, big episode coming at you today. Very excited to have you on while I just mute my watch. Um, we're gonna have a lot of fun. This one is all about um, water, access, and equity. And if you're a longtime fan of the show, you know we love to talk about empathy and action. And these are things that we're gonna be talking about today, along with my favorite drink in the world, water. Uh, for those of you that are tuning in from school and from your kitchens or from your living rooms, hi, 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 welcome, uh, welcome to the show. Really excited to hang out with you all today um, while we talk about water, uh, do some, uh, do a, a pollution experiment and do a couple cool illustrations to show just how much water there is in the world and just how little of it we can drink. Um, if you want to hang out with us, this show will run for about the next 25, 30 minutes. Uh, and it's our Ram at Home programming for some distance learning all coming from our household to you uh, in the Royal Ontario Museum. Last week, and it's up on YouTube right now, you can learn, uh, we learned all about DNA, Oliver Hadrath was on, and we learned just how they are the building blocks of life and how you can sort of do an experiment on a strawberry and extract the DNA from it and see it. So that's super cool. And next week, paleontologist Ashley Reynolds is on talk about her latest work on one of our favorite animals, saber cats. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm ready to go. I think it's time for the theme song. I think we're good. Nonstop hearts. Let's go. Let's see if I remember the words. Welcome to the Rom Kid Show with me. We'll do some crafts and tell some stories. Let's talk about science, art, and history. Welcome to the Rom Kids Show, starring you and me. Nice! There we go. That's the theme song portion of the event out of the way. Let's move on over. Uh, of course, we also have a very special guest with us today on the show, uh, Carol Wynn Memorial Indigenous, Memorial Indigenous uh, Youth Staff. Uh, Justin Kiyakato, uh, he's going to be hanging out with us today to talk all about uh, water equity and how it's important that everyone has access to clean drinking water. Uh, we are very excited. Uh, what are we talking about? Water. We're talking about this. Uh, my favorite cup, the water cup right there. Um, and inside of it is a giant ice cube. Happy to have you all here. So before we get going, Water. Yeah, water. Um, oh, Remy's here? Hi, Remy. What's going on? Nice to see you. Got to have, I, Very excited. What do we need to do our project today? Um, you need water, such as this water right here. You're going to need um, toilet paper, everyone's favorite uh, pandemic product. You're going to need some toilet paper right there. Uh, Probably some scissors. If you're a longtime viewer of the show, you know that these are our cursed scissors, uh, but we will be using those. Uh, we're going to need some, what's this called? Food coloring. Very excited about that. And then you're going to need a bunch of little cups, okay? Little containers. Clear works best, transparent, uh, so that we can do um, an activity. Uh, all about how pollution travels through our water systems. It's an experiment so that you can visualize just how pollution uh, can travel from one end of a water network or one end of a river all the way down to a lake or an ocean and how along the way other pollution can join in and cause all sorts of problems. But before we get started on that and while you're collecting all your materials, and before we introduce our guest, Justin, I want to talk a little bit about water, what water is. Water is an incredibly uh, important uh, liquid that we all need. And in fact, all life needs it. It's necessary for sustaining our lives. Our bodies, uh, if you're a kid, have more water in it than when you're an adult. But for an adult, we have about 60% of our body is just water. And when you're younger, there's even more okay we eat from water okay food grows in it we drink it uh life was formed uh billions of years ago in water uh it's an important important part of our lives uh water exists in three different states okay 
So water exists as a liquid, as you can see in our cup right here. It exists as a solid, as you can see it by my super duper cool um, giant ice cube right there. And it also exists in the air as a gas. You can look up at clouds uh, and water vapor, or uh, if you're making tea and that steam comes out, water can exist as all three states, which is another very special power about it. Uh, why do we need water? Well, we need water to drink. Mm, and mine is fizzy, which is my preferred way to drink water. Um, we need water, uh, water to make our bodies work. So think about your body right now and where water might come in into play here. Um, are your, do, like your eyes are moist, okay, to keep them from getting too dry. Um, you can think about your arms, like find some muscle, find some muscle on you right there. And you feel how it's a little bit squishy, you can flex it and it's strong and hard, but if you let it go, it's a little bit squishy. And that's because our muscles are full of water. Uh, you can even think about times when you have to go to the bathroom and how water might be involved with that. That helps us get waste out of our bodies, another really important way that water impacts us. Something else is think about maybe if you get a cut and maybe you might bleed a little bit. Water plays a really important role in the blood that flows through our veins and through our bodies. And think about sometimes uh, maybe when you're sad or upset and you might cry. Or think about times when you're really, really happy and something funny happens. One of my close friends, Alex, or you might know her as Schnex on this show, uh, she cries all the time when something funny happens or she sees a very cute dog. So there's all these ways that our body expresses why it needs water and how water inside of it works, okay? Water is an important thing for all living life on Earth. It works in a similar way uh, for all animal life and then it works in a different way um, for uh, plant life and things like that. But water is necessary for everything. Where can we find water? Well, here's a picture of the globe. You can see it right there. This was taken on an Apollo mission from space of our Earth. And you can see that so much of the Earth is covered by water. 71% of the Earth is covered by water. Uh, but an important thing that we're going to talk about today is just because the earth is covered in it doesn't mean that all of it is drinkable. I made this little graph right here. Each dot represents 1% uh, for a total of 100 circles, 100 dots. This represents all of the water in the world. These three circles right here represent all the fresh water in the world. So look at how much water exists that we can't even touch or filter to, uh, to drink. And then you see right here, right on the end of this dot, it's almost a little bit yellow. You can barely see it. Right there, 3% of the world's water is fresh water and barely a percent, even less than a percent, um, is uh, water that we can drink. Okay? And we're going to talk about that today because for all this water in the world and for all these people, you know, billions of people in the world that need to drink it, for whatever reason, not everyone has access. And we're going to break that down uh, with my friend. Uh, let's introduce him right here. I'm going to pull up the screen. I know Justin will be here soon. I'm very excited. Justin, when you're there, pop your head back in. I'm hyped. There he is. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is uh, Kiowa Wind Memorial Indigenous Youth Support Stop, Justin Kiyakato, joining us with what an incredible entrance. We've never had an entrance like that on the show. Um, how are you I doing like today? I can surprise you. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm very excited. You know, it's snowing today, and snow is another form that water represents as a solid, which I think is good. You know, it's a nice... It's a nice sort of uh, note that we're seeing that water is all around us. And Justin, that brings me to my first point. And then right after that, I'm going to start on, my, on, my, on our experiment here. But where do we find water in the world? Well, if you look at a globe, you can see that it's like a majority of the globe is blue. So that's, those are our oceans and seas. Um, you can also find water in places like lakes, rivers, bogs, underground water. There's water everywhere, but uh, like around 70% of the entire planet is covered in water, but only about 1% is drinkable. Now, we're going to talk a little bit today about drinking water, and we're going to talk a lot about um, water overall. 
And I want us to do an experiment today uh, that where we're gonna sort of demonstrate how these water systems that Justin just spoke about, these rivers and these marshes and these oceans um, can, be com can be polluted, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have a couple different jars here and I'm gonna fill them all up with water. I'm using this nice teapot. Oh wow, I really poured that one right to the top. It'll be fine. If I make a little bit of a mess, that's okay. But it's a good time to remind you all that this pr uh, science experiment, because it is a science experiment, uh, will take the rest of the day and overnight to manifest, which means that you're not gonna see the results of this science experiment until tomorrow morning, okay? Because it takes a lot of time to do the science that we're going to do. But I'm gonna keep pouring my water in just like that into my little transparent jars. Sweet, I did that. I'm just gonna move that right out of the way. Leave that there while everyone gets ready. Justin, all of these different sort of waterways that you're talking about, can we drink all of that water? No, unfortunately not. Most of the water is not healthy to drink. Uh, it can be uh, dirty or what the majority of the water is, is salty, which is just, it's, it's not healthy for you to drink. We need fresh water, which is salt free water. And then there's also a good portion of water that's called brackish water, where fresh water and salt water mix. And we can't drink that either. This is really good, this is really good. Let's break down some different waterways right now, some water systems for our friends at home to see if we can drink it, okay? So I wanna know, can we drink the, the ocean? No, we can't drink the ocean, not unless we do a lot of work. And why can't we drink the ocean? Well, it's so salty that it throws your body into a disbalance and it makes you sick. So we need to drink water that doesn't have salt in it. It needs to be fresh water, not salty. Okay, this is, a, this is an interesting one. Can I drink the water from a marsh or a swamp? Uh, no, it's too dirty. It needs to be filtered. It needs a lot of work too. Interesting thing about swamps and marshes is they're sort of like the nature's way of filtering water. And so while we can't drink it for ourselves, because of all like the little organisms and things that are in it, it actually does a really important job of uh, cleaning up water for our ecosystems. Okay, this is another one for you and there's, it's snowing today, but if it wasn't so cold, it would be rain. Um, can I drink water uh, in like a pothole on a street after a rainstorm? No, it's really dirty water. I wouldn't drink that unless you do some work with that one too. You need to boil it and filter it and uh, it's mostly just leave it alone. Let the sewers take that one. I like that. That's a good pro tip right there from Justin. Okay, now uh, we have taps in our household. I believe that the best water in our house comes from the bathroom tap. I'm gonna let that, you know, marinate with everyone at home. That's a discussion to have about where the best water in your house comes from. But um, can I drink water from my tap? Yes, you can drink water from your tap and we're very lucky for that. Um, and so today we're going to talk a little bit about the water that you can drink from a tap, but also how some folks, right, Justin, not everyone that the water comes out of their tap, can they drink? No, no. Some people can't drink the water out of the tap. And that's one of the big things we'll be discussing today. Okay. So now before I get back to my experiment, I want to do another demonstration for our friends at home about water, about how much water there is, um, and how little of it we can drink. Okay, so in my beaker right here, as you can see, our nice little science beaker sometimes makes an appearance as a volcano on this show. Um, you can see all the water in the world. Okay, this is all the water right here. Um, and so I'm going to take this out. So I've taken out what I hope is three drops. One, two, three. Okay, did you see that? Those three drops represent all the fresh water in the world that exists, okay? And as Justin mentioned, fresh water exists in rivers, fresh water exists in lakes. Canada's full of fresh water. Fresh water uh, exists in glaciers, but not all of that we can drink. In fact, if you look inside my little eyedropper right here, can you see how it's a little bit wet on the inside? Those tiny little droplets right there is all the water in the world that folks like you and I can drink, okay? All of this water, the water that is left in our eyedropper 
is all that we can drink. It's so, so, so little. But somehow we have to, you know, irrigate food, make sure there's water for over 6 billion people to drink. And so let's talk about this right now, Justin. Oh, before we do that, Justin, because it's a very important point, let me do the next step of my science experiment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna absorb some of this, this top water here, because like that is, that is way too much water at the top. I poured way too much in there. And I'm just gonna absorb it, make a little bit of space, move it off to the side. Okay, so with your food coloring, your food coloring is gonna represent pollution. Okay, and so at the top of our little river, uh, our waterway right here, I'm gonna put in a bunch of blue food coloring. Okay, just a whole bunch. And that represents pollution right there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one piece of toilet paper, all right, and I'm gonna cut it into a third. So I'm gonna take one third of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into my blue water, and then I'm gonna put it into my next container, okay? And so what we're trying to show here is how water can carry pollution from one end of a waterway to the next. And you can already see that all of this blue pollution right here, our food dye, is traveling through the toilet paper into our next water container, okay? And that's how pollution travels. And what we're going to see in a little bit as I keep connecting our waterways together is that this blue ink will go into this container and then into this container and then into this container. And remember at the top when I said that this is a project that will take over a day to do? Do this in a place where you can walk away from it and then tomorrow see how far your blue food coloring went. And in fact, I'm gonna probably put a little bit more blue food coloring in there in a bit. But right now I wanna get back to our good friend Justin to talk about water. Uh, we were talking about how not everyone has access the clean drinking water. How, why is that? Well, um, there's there's many places in the world where it's hard to actually find drinking water. So there's like uh, lots of countries that are living in say the deserts, where there's just not a lot of drinking water around. We'll have a lot of difficulty providing people with that. Um, but there's also like, we also have to treat a lot of water and that's where we went into a lot of problems in say Canada. That's really interesting. Okay, one of the things that you said a little bit earlier in the show is boiling water, okay? So some mm -hmm. people have to boil the water that comes out of their tap to drink it. Why do they have to boil it? Well, because water, um, providing water is more complicated than just having the water come from the lake and go right into your, your tap and come out your tap and into your glass. You need to do things to the water to make it safe because water in the wild can be dirty and it can have a lot of little things called microbes in them, which can work against you and make you sick. That's really interesting. I know that when I went camping when I was younger, we had to, for the, we went to Algonquin Park and we had to drink the water from the lakes, but we had to treat it first with these little pumps. So, you know, just because fresh water uh, on lake water doesn't have salt in it, it still has these like microorganisms in it that, you know, are bad for us. Now, one of the things is that Canada has an absolute ton of fresh water. This is something that we know, Justin, but not everyone in Canada has access to clean drinking water. You know, what are some of these places? Well, unfortunately in Canada, uh, there's a lot of inequity in the, the access to fresh drinking water. Uh, we have a lot of small communities uh, and the majority of them are indigenous communities that don't have access to like water that's ready to go out of the tap and they have to they're put under what is called a boil water advisory or even a do not consume advisory. There's 43 reservations as I counted that do not have access to water just straight out of the tap. They have to boil it first to make sure it's safe to drink. That sounds like, that sounds so incredibly unfair. Like imagine, you know, we're in the city of Toronto. This is where the show, our show uh, takes place. You might be somewhere else, but I can't imagine, you know, the city of Toronto where I live, where we live, to not be able to drink that water, you know? 
And so I guess what I want to know is how come in these indigenous communities, they don't have access to clean drinking water? Well, yeah, so the, there's these 43, um, there's 43 in Ontario, as uh, mentioned. And one of the big issues that we run into is that the, the, the reservations were never built with the happiness of the people who live there in mind. They were, uh, it's a very, very complex system. There's a lot of reasons, but uh, they weren't built for the happiness of the people in mind. And it has only become a priority to the Canadian government to provide this water recently. I think that's a really good way of talking about it. You know, something that we've, we try and talk about on this show um, is that indigenous communities all through North America have been here since time in memoriam and uh and it's with the you know european settlers over the last you know couple hundred years that really pushed uh these communities that have lived here for so 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 long off of the grounds that they lived and the waterways that they lived right and that's really really unfair because today you know these communities don't have access to the things that really you know they need and that we all need okay and so this is something that, you know, we hope that in your classrooms uh, and at home, you talk about more about how there is this, you know, long standing injustice um, around uh, indigenous people uh, in Canada. You know, it's something that we really need to talk about because at the very minimum, we should all be able to drink the water that comes from our taps and it is deeply unfair. So Justin, one of the words that you brought up was equity. And that's a really important word. Can you tell us what equity means? Well, equity is the kind of like the steps to get to equality. It's um, equity is making sure that we all get good results. It's giving the right amount of help to that is uh, to where it is needed. So uh, some people need more help than others after all, and it is equitable to achieve equality. Now. I really like that. Justin, you gave a really good example yesterday when we were chatting about this in advance. Can you give us an example of equity? Okay, so um, here's my example. Imagine that you're big and strong and you're really good at catching fish, all right? And you have some neighbors that aren't big and strong and they're not very good at catching fish. Well, you catch a lot of fish, so you're not, very, you're not hungry and maybe you can't even eat all the fish that you catch. So what you do is you give some of those fish to your neighbors. And at the end, nobody's hungry and everybody is happier. So we just take what we need. You know, going along with that fish sort of idea here, uh, you know, if you're a big family, you need more fish than a smaller family. But everyone needs access to fish to make sure that they're all full. And that's really what equity is. And something that we talk a lot about on this show over the, I was gonna say years, but over like the 35 episodes that we've been doing this is empathy and like putting yourself in someone else's shoes and imagining the experience that they're going through, okay? So if you can imagine yourself in the shoes of someone who doesn't have access to clean drinking water to, you know, just have a, a sip in a glass, you know, that's important, okay? Now, how does that make you feel? And what do you want to do about that? Okay. And so empathy always needs to be followed up by action. And that action gives us equity. Okay. And that's what we're all looking for. Empathy without action really is meaningless because we're not doing anything about making sure that everyone has equal access or equal rights or the ability to live freely. Uh, and you know, to drink that delicious, delicious water. Okay, um, move the glasses closer to the corner of the table. Oh, so that we can see. That makes a lot of sense. I'm also dripping a lot of water. I've been a little bit messy with this. So again, do this somewhere where it's nice and safe. Um, okay, Justin, what can we do about this? Because we got a water crisis here. What can we do about it? Uh, well, so there's a lot of, luckily, there's, there's things that a lot of people are doing. Uh, our specific example today is the story of uh, Josephine Mandeman, who is, a, who is the founder of the Mother Earth Water Walk. Uh, one day she was so inclined to action that she 
uh, decided to go for a walk carrying heavy pails of water all the way around the Great Lakes. Uh, she founded this thing called the Water Walks. She was joined by a lot of people. So her work was raising awareness and she did raise awareness because lots of people took part in it and it continued as a tradition uh, as after that. Um, she not only walked around one of the Great Lakes, she walked around all five of the Great Lakes in total. An estimated 17,000 kilometers. And she's just a little, little old woman. So she did her absolute best to make sure she raised awareness. And we're still talking about her efforts today. I like that. You know, awareness is really important. Uh, Josephine is doing something really, really important for us to see, you know, that people need to have some action going on. Okay, now my next question for you, Justin, is we're seeing what other people are doing in raising awareness. What can I do at home? Well, at home, there's a lot of things we can do. We can be a lot more responsible with the water that we do have. Um, well, like, so for instance, you could take uh, shorter showers or you could make sure that you're not running your water as long when you're washing the dishes or we can choose bigger things. Like we could change our perception of what lawns look like. We could change the plants that we have our, on our front yard. But they take a lot less water. If we do things and we're more responsible with water, there'll be more water to go around for more people for a longer amount of time. Um, so just don't be wasteful and we can do a lot there, but we can also talk to our representatives and make sure that they understand our feelings about things like the inequity that is going on about water access. I love that. Just to pick apart some of those things in there that I really, really like. Yesterday we were talking about grass on your front lawn and how much water that takes. You know, people uh, water their lawns at nighttime to make sure that their lawns get enough water. And really, I just think that's not maybe the best use. And we were talking about how clovers, which need a lot less water, look just as beautiful on your lawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of local plants that are made to live here in Canada and they, they, they're, they survive with the amount of water that simply falls out of the sky. So that we do a lot of extra work for our lawns and it's not really necessary at the end of the day. The final thing that I know that we want to talk about and we've mentioned a lot on the show is you can make a, a point about water with your dollars as well. So for example, as opposed to buying water bottles and things like that, get yourself a nice bottle that you can fill your water up with. That helps protect our waters. Uh, make sure that when you know, you're know you creating things that uh, you know waste from it doesn't end up into our sewer systems. And something that we'd like to talk a lot too is talk, uh, if, you're, if you're younger, talk to trusted family uh, and friends about the importance of everyone having access uh, to clean drinking water, okay? Especially our indigenous friends and communities. And as well, reach out, and this is a great time to talk to your parents or the adults in your room, or ask them to help you to write a letter to your local politicians saying that clean drinking water for everyone, including our indigenous friends, is something that we need immediately and should be made a priority and something should be done about it. Okay? That is something that is a really great way to show your voice as a democratic system. This is what we're supposed to do. Okay, So that's a great way to reach out. Justin Kiyokato, thanks for being on the show. Well, thanks for having me, Kieran. I really was, appreciate being here. It was fun. This was a lot of fun. We worked really hard to put this together. We started brainstorming the show with some of our other friends at the ROM in December, and I'm so glad we got to talk about it. Remember, this is... Um, Oh, I'm going to explain one more thing about my science experiment. So right here in our science experiment, we've got our blue pollution at the top going into our waterway. You can already see it's starting to make our second cup blue. And then we put yellow pollution into this other system that's coming into our waterway. And we're starting to see that that water is going to turn yellow. Over time, by tomorrow, you'll see how the blue water and the yellow water start to mix and create green pollution. And then we'll see over time, as I add in, you know, one final piece in our waterway, how all of this sort of ends up into our lakes or our oceans, which this final water, uh, this final 
a little bucket of water there means, okay? So this is a grapes uh, uh, experiment to show how pollution travels through our waters. Uh, and remember uh, that you need to sort of leave it here overnight to really see your full uh, results. I wanted to do one final thing. There's a great book that was recommended uh, to me uh, just today. It's called We Are uh, the Water Protectors. It's written by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michaela Goad, two indigenous um, uh, writers and illustrators. It's a fabulous book about why it's important for us um, to take care of our waterways, okay? So go check that out at your local library or request it from your local library so that you can get it and be able to learn about this at home. Okay, thanks so much, Justin, again. Thank you for being here today. This was so much fun. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me. See you next week, everyone. Tuesday at 2 p.m. We'll have paleontologist Ashley Reynolds on to talk about saber cats. Uh, stay safe. Wear a mask. We love you. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.